want to support the Shuffle Squad, be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. Many of you are fans of Goldango EX, and we have one player that's seen a lot of success with it, Jelly Van Campen. Now, they recently made top cut at Dortmund Regionals, and if you look through their history of playing the game, I believe they have another four top cuts with Goldango in themselves. So it's one of those things where they might be the best Goldango player in the world. In this video, I'm gonna be showcasing their latest list, gameplay, strategy, and more. The list is available right in the description. You can copy and paste it right into PTCG Live. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. Let's look at this list. Here we have it, the Goldango list. So using Goldango, we want to basically rip a bunch of energy from our hand. And we only have 10, so we got to be able to get them back somehow. Um, so we're going to be using Goldango, pitching them from our hand, and then using Superior Energy Retrieval to get them back. And you really don't need too many to knock out a Pokemon, like let's say Charizard. Uh, you only need seven energies total, 50 times the seven energies equals 350. That gets the knockout. We have Goldango as the built-in draw engine of drawing the cards, and it gets a little bit of a boost when it's in the active spot. But we also have the bib if we're trying to draw extra cards on the bench too. So earlier in the turn, we're probably wanna be using the barrel, and then maybe playing a card such as uh, Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking, put cards like su uh, Superior Energy Retrieval on top of your deck, then use Goldango to draw into them, having these huge explosive turns. Same thing with that Fezzendipity, same thing with that Radiant Greninja. Where this deck has a really interesting turn is adding in a 1-1 Palkia V-Star. So Palkia V-Star, we saw it's its own deck um, that also made top four at the regional. So very good card across the board. But here we can actually use it to self-power itself up since we don't need to discard metal energies we can discard any energies this gives us additional type coverage in our deck on top of giving us a backup attacker on top of giving us an opportunity to turn that radiant greninja from just a draw engine with its concealed cards ability into one of the game's best attackers with its attack so we can go moonlight shuriken go 90 90 knocking out two pokemon and in a format where a lot of decks are cutting mana fee we can almost get a guaranteed two prize cards per game off of a single prize card pokemon forcing our opponent to find that prime catcher counter catcher boss to get over the pokemon on top of having a pokemon that can knock out a gold dango a stage one pokemon with 260 hp i mean it's one of those things where I'm here to discover this list with you. If there's any of the cards that you need for this deck, check out our sponsors at Kayfabe Cards. They have a large selection of single, um, of just singles. Um, so you could probably pick up most of your Goldango deck, if not all of it, from them. Uh, link is available in the description. We also have PTCGL store. If you want to get any of those code cards, you can get from any sets, get a bunch of them. And once you start getting duplicate cards, you get credits. You can craft any card you want including those gold dangos and that's how you might see some of us uh youtubers have all those alt arts and all those cool cards it's not because we're just pulling them out of pack sure you might be getting them from some points but you could always uh kind of craft them to your own liking want to see how this deck works in action let's check out the gameplay portion all right so we're gonna go ahead and call the coin flip and i don't even remember what i selected but i'm hoping we won the coin flip we did not win the coin flip, so that's fine. Sometimes it's easier when your opponent chooses. You don't have to be like, should I go first or second? In this case, I think we'd want to go first. We do have the call for family attack, but I do think it takes a little bit of pressure off of us um, when we don't necessarily have to grab everything. So this is the continuous coin toss gimme ghoul. This is our Bidoof. Bidoof, we might want to draw some more cards when it comes to this hand. So let's go ahead and just put up this gimme ghoul there. Um, we're gonna have to get out a few more gimmick goals and hopefully our opponent doesn't really have anything that can knock us out not sure um what deck they might be playing but it looks like it may be a charizard deck the way that it looks built okay so it's an arceus deck this should actually be pretty good for us across the board because we can scale our damage to knock out any pokemon making goldango really easy to deal with um and we're just really gonna see whatever our opponent can do but i mean Goldango should just be one of the easier Pokemon to knock out their Pokemon. We're probably not going to be using the whole Radiant Greninja strategy with Moonlight Shuriken. 
Okay, it's just Arctina. So, as long as we only put single prize card Pokemon out there, I don't think our opponent can draw more than one single prize card per game. Or per turn, so. Looks like we have almost everything set up here. So, before I start off with anything, I don't think this is a matchup that I'm going to need Canceling Cologne in. So, I'm just going to go Earth and Vessel, and I'm going to discard the Canceling Cologne. Sure, I could have used Buddy Buddy Pop in first. I don't think it matters. Um, I just want to get some water energies in our discard pile for the purposes of having Palkia. Um, in some of my videos, I've just been highlighting some of the key cards in the deck with um, some alt arts. So you can see when it's easier to search out that metal energy might be more important to attack with Goldango, whereas water energy is going to be there for Palkia. Um, and Superior is going to be one of the more important cards in the deck. So we have that. And I think in order, because we want to have more basic Pokemon, I'm just going to use Radiant Greninja. I'm going to use Radiant Greninja first before Buddy Poffin. Um, just in, on the off chance that I am able to draw more Pokemon out of the deck. So let's see if we have that. Didn't work, but that's okay. That's how sequencing um, is fine. The Gimme Ghoul, I don't think we actually gain an advantage for having the Culper family out right now. Um, or out later, I should say. I'd rather have a continuous toy coin toss later on in the game. So let's get these Pokemon out. Um, I could use Pokestop. I'm really not super worried about it. So I think I'm going to just go end up putting the Bidoof down and keeping our board like this. We should be able to kind of reach all the, the right pieces to make this happen. We have the Ultra Ball for the other the barrel. We have the Radiant Greninja. So I th think I don't want to do anything else when it comes to this turn. Um, and as much as Continuous Coin Toss could knock out an Arceus, I mean, I'd have to get 11 heads. And if there's any mathematicians um, or anyone who just odds aren't there. So... And even if the odds were there to get to anything, I'd need to at least get two heads. And this energy is still worth the same amount when I'm using Make It Rain. So we're going to go here and pass. I don't want to use Pokestop again. Maybe I could have put Pokestop out in play. But a lot of these decks are just going to be like, we're going to drop a Lost City on you and play Judge on you anyways. So I'm fully expecting us to get some kind of situation where our opponent... Oh. I was about to be like, there had to be some kind of situation where our opponent's going to go Arceus, V-Star... Use Drudge, disrupt your hand, and see how it goes. Now, in this case, I do want to put out the one that has... I want to keep the one that has the the free retreat, or the one less retreat, on our bench, because that's something we might use. I'm going to put out this one. The only reason why we split the gimmick goals is because one has 70 HP, one has 50 HP. Um, but that's okay. I think before we do anything, I'm probably just going to end up using... Uh, make it rain or not make it rain uh, coin bonus so that's gonna allow me to see some extra cards and hopefully i'm able to get a code breaker or something nothing there i do need to get four in the discard pile so that's really like kind of step one um i am gonna go ahead and i think i'm gonna poke a stop first then use rating greninja trying to clear out some more non-supporter cards out of my discard pile or out of my deck and then try to draw into some cards with Radiant Greninja. Okay, um, not really the greatest, but also not really the worst. I can thin some more cards out of our deck, so we want to probably just grab some other things like the Pheasantipity. That can definitely allow us to draw some pieces. And let's go ahead and go for Concealed Cards, Pitching, another Energy. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, not that bad. Uh, that might be something that we want to do, actually. Because we're not really seeing all the cards that we want right now. Um, we do have three energies in our discard pile, but we're not all the way there. Um, Jamming Tower is probably not going to matter too much in this matchup. So I am going to go ahead and discard Professor Turas because they can't knock me out. And I'm going to discard Jamming Tower. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab another Goldango. So you can see we're all getting set up here. And as much as these aren't getting the full benefit of being from the active spot, um, we still have the access to drawing extra cards during our turn. So after we play the Iono, which is going to take us to six, shout out this loose cable for uh, going out there. Any of the ones who have been watching the channel lately are probably like, yo, Zach, um, <laughs> you got to fix this cable, yo. Um, shout out Amazon. Let's go ahead and play this Iono. Um, so Iono is going to take our hand from uh, four cards, playing the Iono to three cards to six cards. 
I could draw a card, a card, and draw three cards with that festivity, bringing me up to 11. So I'm hoping that that's enough for us to like find some way to get the five energies I need to get the knockout on the Arceus V. Looking really good uh, to make this happen. So I think before I do anything else, I'd still like to, I either want to use Night Stretcher or I want to, do I want to try to get at the Barrel? I think I'm going to decide how I want to deal with this in a second. So let's go Coin Bonus first. And the only reason why I'm going to be using Coin Bonus first, and yeah, I think we're going to definitely get it here, um, is because I'm still deciding on how I want to necessarily approach the situation. Um, and right now I'm, I'm still just unsure on which Pokemon I want to get. Okay, so we have the Gimme Ghoul, we have the Babero. Um, they are playing a Judge base deck, and if they knock out a Goldango, we'll still have two, so that's enough to go through the rest of the game. I think what I'm going to end up going for is Night Stretcher here. Night Stretcher just getting back. Um, just getting back this Bidoof. So we have our full setup, and this is basically ideal board states. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, I do need to attach energy for my turn. And this is going to help us get the other three energies. Um, all right, I guess we could just use the energy retrieval and not have to pitch anything. That also makes a lot of sense. So we're just going to go ahead, energy retrieval. Um, I honestly would not be surprised if our opponent just conceded the game at this point. Because now we have the opportunity to just get the knockout on their Arceus. They don't have another Arceus in play. Meaning that we are not expecting attack next turn. So with us having uh, Cypher Maniacs code breaking, we could basically knock out any of their Pokemon in play. They'll have to go for a defensive maneuver to try to jump back in this game, probably by sending up their Bidoof. Um, that means we only get to draw one knock, one prize card if we don't play a boss, if we don't play a prime catcher. So this is really like how these hyper aggressive decks play against each other. They're like, do you have a boss? Do you have a prime catcher? Do you have something? And in this case, we just want to go after that Arceus V because it's their kind of their big portion of the deck, searching for any two cards that you want accelerating the energies and doing damage um one of the best decks from previous seasons and here we're just gonna have to rip into their pokemon now the pokemon league headquarters is only for attacks used by basic pokemon so i don't think we need to worry about that too too much i um, mean considering we're going to be going for prime catcher anyways our opponent if anything made it easier for us um just having an extra energy in play um naturally we already have the knockouts on this pokemon um and i mean we have the boss's orders so we could actually just do things differently if we want but i think before we do anything else is there a world where i want to can i attach retreat get around i mean there's i don't think we're going to be able to use the barrel because they're not playing judge but it would have been great to try to build up a big hand i think if i just end up going for um Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking. Um, because we already get the Superior Energy Retrieval. Um, we're really just looking to put a Prime Catcher on top of the deck. And this is really where like the strategy works out. Because there's our Prime Catcher. Um, I might as well just grab an Earthen Vessel. Because that sounds great to get some of the other energies that we have hiding in our deck. Over at the top. So we put those on top. And this is where we can just go something like... Um, Radiant Greninja, or we can go uh, Goldango to draw the top card of our deck. So, depending on the order, like, obviously make the right order for your deck, whatever. But here, I'm just going to grab both, because I also just want to kind of clear through the deck. Wow, it's a Prime Catcher and an Earthen Vessel. Who would have ever thought? Um, we would have, right? Um, so let's go ahead, and we have access to using Earthen Vessel. We don't care about Buddy Poppin, so those just become really easy fodder. There's our two energies, and let's go ahead and draw our card. We're gonna use the coin bonus here first because we can always decide what we have uh, before we send up this one with the other energy. It doesn't really matter which order we super much do it in. Uh, I'm just gonna go Prime Catcher. They're like probably just hoping that Prime Catcher is prize. And again, just because this is not a basic Pokemon, um, we can now use our coin, coin bonus and get that huge knockout um, chasing their Pokemon. So very aggressive deck when you think about it like it's up there with the maridons the raging bolts and it did just top cut this regionals and dortmunds um with many players attending so might just end up being the deck to kind of play 
really think about it um goldango's cool it's games like that where i play goldango and i'm like if i went first the deck would have been even better and i think it's one of those decks where if you give it a try it might just end up being one of those decks that you're like wow this is really good um hopefully this video inspires you to go out and play some goldango and if not at least you become a little bit more aware of it um one of my personal goals with the shuffle squad is to at least showcase the decks and be like okay this is kind of how the deck plays out because not every single person knows how a deck plays out a lot of my dms are like hey zach how does blood moon or saluna play out uh with iron valley in or how does like goldango is a deck that we haven't covered in a minute it's one of the top 20 or so decks and that's what we're really trying to cover on this channel so hopefully that does um it allows you to learn a little bit more about the metagame if you're ever like trying to learn more in depth about our decks we do have our uh, Metafy group that you can check out in the description. I offer coaching on Metafy personally, if you're ever trying to update up your game or something like that. So hopefully um, those resources help you get along your Pokemon journey. But I appreciate everyone for tuning in and um, hopefully we see exactly what's going on. Like these are the videos that I actually recorded before the Lima special event, even though this video I believe is coming out Wednesday after the Lima special event. So I'm gonna be coming home, um, working on some content. I'm not gonna be in Louisville this weekend. Um, it's Canadian Thanksgiving. So Baltimore, birth of my daughter, Louisville, Canadian Thanksgiving. And um, it's one of those things where things are a little bit different for me, but my next major event is going to be the Latin American International Championships. Um, just in about, I guess, three weeks um, from the point of when this video is released. So I'm excited about that. And then I kind of get back into uh, my super competitive grind where I'm going to Sacramento, Bogota, Toronto um, to round out 2025, seeing where we're at. Um, still top 125 in North America, so I'm really excited to see where my opportunities are this season, uh, chasing for that invite, especially when it's a little bit more competitive. I'm just a, I'm just a mere polka dad, y'all, so we'll see exactly how it goes, but I'm super excited on my journey. All right, I'll get there with all y'all later. I could yap forever. Peace out and have a great one. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.